recognizing me. I raise uh, this point of order that H.R. Um, 558 contains several potential unfunded mandates that would burden the states, burden private insurance companies, and burden women. I am also raising this point of order because it is a powerful vehicle to register my concern that this bill is a misguided ideological distraction from what should be our top priority, getting people back to work and protecting working families who've been hit hard by economic circumstances. It is so clear to me that in spite of what our colleagues may say across the aisle, this bill is not about public funding for abortion. It's really crystal clear, Madam Speaker, that the Affordable Care Act already explicitly prohibits federal funding for abortion. It reaffirms the Hyde Amendment and even includes the Nelson Amendment to ensure that there's no commingling of funds. H.R. 358 would bring back the infamous world of Stupak Pitts, but this, it adds even more restrictive language to the proposal. This bill would essentially ban insurance coverage of abortion in health care exchanges, not for women who are being publicly funded or subsidized through the exchanges, but even for women paying with their own private dollars, Madam Speaker. In addition, H.R. 358 would create a system that plays Russian roulette with pregnant women's lives when they enter a hospital. This would mean that any hospital could refuse to perform an emergency abortion even if a woman would die without it, without violating the federal law designed to prevent people from being denied emergency medical care. It goes even further by paving the way to allow states refusal laws that are not limited to the provision of abortion services, but to anything that would be considered controversial. Treatment for uh, STIs, uh, birth control services, screening services, and counseling. And with that, I would yield uh, time to my good colleague from California, Representative Spear. I thank the gentlelady from Wisconsin.